Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending June 6th. First up, this was sent in by Navy Thomas 8. It's going to be a bunch of links. I told you last week I was going to talk about it this week, and I wanted a little bit more time to look into it um, a little more in depth. It's the Harley Davidson Live Wire Project, the electric motorcycle project. I did find a, a link particular. Some of the links that uh, Tom sent me to uh, get started on it, to me they were uh, <clears throat> mostly puff pieces and stuff like that, and uh, they're fine for what they are. I mean, the bike it has uh, a lot of cool parts about it too, but I like a little bit more in-depth and people giving some honest opinions, whether they're positive or negative. And uh, I've found really a few times when I've done articles, there's no better place uh, in most cases than Jay Leno's garage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to feature about 45 minutes or so of just a little portion of his video. It runs about 21 minutes with him talking about the Project Livewire bike. Now, before I, I run the video, I want to let you know that the Project Livewire bike is just a test bed right now. They're doing test rides all around the country of this electric motorcycle to just get some uh, feedback from customers as to would it be good for Harley in the future to maybe get into um, electric motorcycles. I think eventually every motorcycle manufacturer is going to have to choose an endpoint to do that, but it just uh, depends on when that time is going to be, and he kind of talks about the little... Uh, plus and minus features on it. Um, to me, uh, the the one thing I like about it, they do give it a distinctive sound, and that'll be the, the part of the video that I'm featuring from Jay Leno. Will uh, You'll be able to get a chance to hear that distinctive uh, whirring kind of jet engine sound. But um, a couple of the minuses are the uh, fact that it's just it's got very limited range, maybe 60 miles maximum, which to me kills almost all electric motorcycles, really. I mean, even if you're talking 100 miles range, that's much better. But then once the range is done, you're pretty much, you know, if, unless they have a fast battery swap out or a fast charging system built into it, you're pretty much done for the day. So that means 50 miles one direction, 50 miles back. And Harley doesn't even give you uh, that much. And the display it looks just a little squared off display. He talks about, too, about how they could, you know, maybe to look at nicer, incorporate that with the same kind of lines of the bike. But basically, here's the video for you to check out. And as usual, all the links to everything will be down in the description box below. All of the links to um, all the other various reviewers, the, the short reviews about the Harley-Davidson electric motorcycle. They're, making, um, they're having test rides all across the country. As a matter of fact, during the time period I'm going to be gone on my trip, on the Route 66 trip with some friends of mine, they're going to be having the electric bikes in the Milwaukee area, Harley-Davidson's hometown and doing test rides. So just go into the Project Livewire link that I uh, give you on there and check to see if there's going to be a test ride in your area. Next up, this is from my friend Chris P. Windows 10 apps and features killed off as Microsoft reveals new limits of operating system. Um, in case you haven't heard, I think pretty much most of the viewers of the show are probably aware they are offering the Windows 10 as a free update if you have Windows 7 or Windows 8. So. Um, basically, you can just, uh, when they do release it at the end of July, um, whenever the release date is, you can just get the free update. But I'm also warning you, too, there are some differences about Windows 2 that you may or may not like. Um, they're going to get rid of old features, Windows Media Center, no longer, Windows Game of Hearts. I mean, th that may seem like a minor thing, but actually, believe it or not, that's about the only game on the uh, Windows operating system I used to play on a semi-regular basis was the Game of Hearts, although I'll have to say I haven't played it in a long time, so maybe that's not such a bad thing there. They're getting rid of it. Um, no more Internet Explorer. The new browser is going to be called Microsoft Edge. Um, also, you will have less control on updates, I guess, if you don't get the Pro or Enterprise editions on the update. If you've got, I think if you start with uh, Windows 7 Pro or Windows 8 Pro, they will upgrade you to the Pro version. But if not, you'll just get the regular version, um, the home version, I guess, is what you would call it or something. Not that I know all the naming conventions of it, but um, no more control over your updates. And that's, to me, kind of important because I'm so particular about in the past when I've had Windows XP update and crash some of my programs or lock stuff up or give me trouble. What I've done is just I turn off all updates until a service pack comes on. And then when the service pack comes, then I do the updates. And I've done the same with Windows 7. I'm just tired with all the different programs and services and things I run of getting an update and then all of a sudden something starts glitching and i got to try to figure out why it's glitching and a lot of times I've traced it back to the Windows update. So 
Less choice for the user. I don't like that quite so much, but I guess that's the way everything is going nowadays, too. Everything's becoming more like just an appliance where you don't, you know, you lose all the controls and it basically either works or doesn't work. But if you're interested and anybody is going to be doing Windows 10, I'm sure I'm going to be doing many, many more future reports. And uh, any of my viewers, if you do um, have some experience with it and want to share, or uh, um, especially even if you feel like later on after you've played around with Windows 10 for quite a long time, if you feel like uh, giving me a small video update, uh, I would be very happy to include it into the show. Always about the viewer input to me. Um, this next one is from the New York Times. Chimpanzees would cook if given the chance, research says. I don't think it's quite, these headlines are kind of like, uh, I don't know, a little bit goofy. I don't think it's so much when the, the chimpanzees would like to cook. I think they would like somebody to cook for them. It's basically showing chimpanzees the choice of two different foods, cooked and not cooked. And the, the thing about it, to uh, make this test a little bit more interesting, is they actually, if the chimpanzees wanted to take a choice of a cooked version of this food, in this case I believe it was a sweet potato, um, instead of having it raw, if they wanted it cooked, they would have to wait just a little bit. So what they would do is hand this chimpanzee a raw piece of the food, and then if it didn't care for it, it would hand it back to the researcher, and then the researcher would put it in a bowl and shake the bowl, and then open the bowl again, and there would be a cooked piece. So it would be like... To the chimpanzee, it would be thinking this device somehow changes the food from a raw state to a cooked state, and uh, they preferred it a lot, a lot more. As a matter of fact, when they got used to eating the cooked version of it, they really did not care for the raw version very much. So, they think this is some kind of trace back to uh, hominids actually uh, having a need to uh, cook food and have have fire and things like that. So maybe something about the history of. Uh, of uh, human beings even maybe brought into this about why we preferred instead of hunter-gatherers where we just picked raw food and just dealt with it that way, why we decided to, buy it, to uh, start making fires and uh, taking the ch chance and the time to uh, cook the food instead of just eating it raw. But if you get a chance to check out that link. And um, last up, I just wanted to do a another promotion for the Facebook page. If you happen to be on Facebook, just look up the Dumpster Divers uh, group on uh, Facebook, and I'll put a link to that down below like everything else. But a lot of interesting posts this last week from June 1st to June 7th. We've had seven posts by the various members. Um, just for an example, we have Catherine's been posting, Zeke's been posting, Josh has been posting, uh, who else? David has been posting. We've had a, a lot of people just sharing uh, different science stories about everything from uh, David's posting about uh, toxoplasma um, linked to mental illness in, uh, for cat owners to uh, gadgets and gizmos. Catherine posted about night vision, being able to uh, do an operation on your eyes and give you night vision as a test. Um, Zeke had about floating solar farms may grow 8,000 tons of veggies a year so all kinds of things to check out and I also want to give a quick promo to another weekly show if you get a chance to check it out it's called In the Lawn with my friend Muzzle Mike and uh, he's actually going to be coming to visit in a few weeks and we may do some combined shows together but um, I would really like if more people would actually make weekly shows that's what I'd really like to see promoted I mean it's not like I'm going to stay with the TDD report forever. That's not likely to happen. It's going to come to an end someday. But uh, I really would like other people just to do uh, amateur-style weekly shows. To me, I, I enjoy them even more than the professional shows. I think they're a lot better when it's just an average person like me or you just doing a weekly show and giving their opinion. To me, I think it's a lot more interesting by far. So that's about it for this week. Take care, everybody. I will catch you next week.